Welcome to Glasses of Bubbly. Today we're pairing the famous Eggs Benedict with two traditional Medford Italian sparkling wines. I'm always surprised that when people pair eggs with sparkling wine, because it doesn't sound like it's going to be an awfully good combination. But it always surprises me, and it is always a good combo. So we've got some really good bubbly. We've opened one of them already. We've got one in the glass, and we have a quick sip of that. Yep. Oh, that smells really good. Wow. So we just go straight into the... We could do. We could go straight into the taste of the sparkling wine, because I'm that keen to taste. With Venti Venti, the Pa Dosse, which we've got here. Method Classico, so traditional method. And this is a Vino Spumanti, quality Vino Spumanti. Any more info, Oliver? Well, this bottle won a bronze medal in the Zesty and Zingy category at the Glass of Bubbly Awards. Yeah. And Venti Venti is Italian, as I said, but the word Venti Venti translates to 2020. Okay. Which, uh, which is which been, been and gone now, isn't it? Been and gone. <laughs> and the, they planted their first vines in North Modena in 2016. Okay, so they're relatively a young brand. In fact, they're a baby, a tiny baby when it comes to the grand scheme of things. But let's give this pub a, 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 a smell and a taste. And Pardose pa is no sugar. This is it's a different kind of aroma. It's got like a dry cheese, dry white cheese, touch of cream, white floral, white fruits on the nose. Yeah, it does. It does have that. I can certainly the cheese for me. You know what it's I'm getting drawn towards an oaky and toasty for some reason, but yeah, I can't quite that. pick out why, but there's definitely that cheese character and that, that yellow touch as well. So I can see there's a touch of the touch of the citrus, zesty and zinginess. I haven't much of that on the nose, mm -hmm. I'm I, mean, I can see why why it could be put into that category yeah, yeah. on the aroma, but I'm hoping for more on the zesty and zingy side and the flavour. It is fresh, it is crisp, mm. it's got a, it's a touch of minerals, a touch of that lemon pulp in there. Yeah. White floral continues for me. It's not overly aggressive, it's nice and refreshing initially, it's a burst of kind of zestiness. That tones down, tones down to more of a silky, subtle style wine wiggling to close. I'd also say that it keeps that dry cheese character. And it's definitely, for the zesty side, it is that you that lemon pulp rather than the skin or anything else. And I'd say there's maybe a touch of a cracker in there, but I can't quite... A cracker? Well, a Christmas cracker? What kind of cracker are we looking at? <laughs> that the cheese is on. The, the cheese, cheese is on, so it's like a shake crackers or wafers or something. But like a, a br more of a brown... A more of a brown whole meal yeah. and such. Really good on the nose, quite pleasing to be honest with you. I know it's very tiny bubbles in the glass as well, so that was good to see. So. Um, we're going to try the, the rosé. Do you want to give that a pop? Yep, I will open the rosé, mm. which is the rosé Lambrusco. The Lambrusco, okay. Which won a silver medal in the Hint of Spice category. <laughs> Boom. That's, that's you. And that's you. Don't think ever. Nice clear bottle showcasing the colour of the wine. I'm always preferring, I'll put it towards on this top there, you can see it better. I prefer the clear bottle when we need to see the colour of the wine, but I do understand that for the longevity, for the storage reason, the darker bottle is better because otherwise this gets affected by the light, what we term as light strike, and it can deteriorate the quality faster uh, if we've got clear bottles. So sometimes you'll find clear bottles will come with a kind of a, a paper kind of covering as well when you buy it from, from the shop. But normally you would get the darker brown or green bottles to protect the wine that bit more. So here we've got the rosé. So this is a brute rosé. Yep, we've stepped up the sugar level a bit. More of a kind of a, a zesty red fruit, zestiness, a touch of pink grapefruit, pink blossom in, on the nose. I'd say it's, it has a similar character to the first one. You, I could almost be able to s smell that they were made by the same, same winemaker. Same wine 
you do get that sometimes when you taste the wines, you can really see the similarities in, in the range. And I suppose when you become very knowledgeable of one winery, sometimes you can pick it out even in the, in the blind tasting, you recognise the, the style and the characters of that wine. Don't get the cheese so much, I get more of a sweeter red berry fruit and the floral notes coming through on this one. There is an element of yeastiness as well on, on the note, so a touch of yeasty, maybe dry pastry, white bread. Yeah, I've got that dry pastry also. I'd say red currant, I think is what I'm thinking of. Red currant, yeah. The little, the little red um, yeah. berry, which is sh very sharp. Definitely, definitely is sharp, isn't it? You can picture that, can't you? Just tasting it there, quite sharp. What about the flavours? Nice, fresh, quite dry. The lowest sugar I reckon, probably about five or six um, grams per litre. Zestiness, mid length, not overly powerful. The red berry, yeah. raspberry kind of um, flavours there. Good amounts of floral for me. Um, elements of yeastiness, we're probably touching upon that dry cheese again towards the close of, of the palate. But it's got kind of like cranberry stuffed in that dry white tree cheese with it. The, the only thing I would add is at the tip of the tongue, you can say just to the back of the top teeth, I get a very nice, moorish, uh, naturally sweet strawberry and raspberry um, juice. Sounds good to me. Well, we need to pair these with Eggs Benedict. Yes, so yes we do. Should we try that? Yeah, um, you pour in. I pour. And I'll give you a little information about the Eggs Benedict. Now, it is an American creation, it was first created in America, and there are two stories to its creation. Okay, go for, go for it. The first one is in 60, no, sorry, 1860, yeah. in Lower Manhattan, in a place called Delmonico's. And the story goes that one of their regu regular customers, uh, Mrs. Ben Benedict came oh, in and good. wanted something different, so their chef put together this, this, this dish. dish. The second story is in New York, New York City in 1894 uh, in the Waldorf Hotel. And that story goes that a retired Wall Street stockbroker by the name of, of Lemuel Benedict was hungover. He walked into the restaurant and ordered something that wasn't on the menu. He ordered toast, poached eggs, eggs, crisp bacon, and a hooker of hollandaise sauce, which is very close to what we have now. And mm. apparently, the uh, one of the people in the restaurant saw the order and thought it was very good. Adapted it a little bit, put in Canadian bacon and an English egg muffin, and that's how. We got it. So it's one of those one of those two stories could be, two. could be correct. But the egg muffin we have here is English egg muffin, Canadian bacon, a poached egg with hollandaise sauce on top. It, they look good, they smell good, but I like those two stories. I must say I do like the was it the businessman there, the, the stockbroker, yeah. the Wall Street stockbroker sounds a nice story, doesn't it? But who knows which one is true, if either are. But anyway, let's do the pairing. So the first we're gonna do it with is with the puzzle say. Venti Venti Par Dolce. And it's still got the lovely runny yolk in the middle. I'm glad that we caught it in time. Just safe. about caught it in time. You've got the white shirt on, I've got the black top on, so I'm safe for any spills. Very light and refreshing. It is. It's quite nice. Nice balance, actually. Very refreshing balance, surprisingly. Um, you get a burst of an increased saltiness, which is obviously derived from, from the bacon. But it's kind of enhanced, and it's a fresh kind of, kind of saline flavour. Then we hit the savoury notes, and then the egg comes in. The wine is kind of lost. It, it, it hits, cleanses the palate, but it doesn't remain too much, doesn't deliver any flavours. The food kind of takes over for me. I would I'd say also it 
it removes the greasiness from the bacon. And I'd, I would agree with the fact that the dish is more prominent here, but I also got a touch of a, a yellow citrus Ooh. from the sparkling wine in the dish. Sounds good. So this is the kind of dish that you, we may have in, in the morning, and some people do have bubbles uh, for, for breakfast. I've been to a few hotels in the past, and along with the croissants and the jams and, and, and whatnot, and orange juice, this sometimes is a bottle of bubbly. I never part, I didn't partake in that myself, but there's sometimes a bottle of champagne or a bottle of sparkling wine there. So champagne for breakfast does happen, and it does usually involve eggs. So now we're going to do the rosé. Well, the Eggs Benedict is a very popular breakfast or even brunch dish. Or brunch dish, okay. But they're saying it's something that comes from the USA. Mm -hmm. Again, light and and refreshing. It's very joyous. Joyous is yeah. what I'd say. Joyous. It has, it has a very nice layer of of red berries. I'd say more more towards the raspberry and strawberry rather than the, the sharper berries. A more sweet, naturally sweet addition. I've got that actually. I, so you tasted it, palate cleansed. And you had a nice burst of kind of subtle red berries, as you say, raspberry, not overly zesty, more subtle flavours. And then you just had a nice display of a little bit of the bacon, but that kind of counts with the bacon out and saltiness better compared to the pub, they'll say. And whether or not that was just sugar combining against the salt, I don't know. And then it's just a smooth kind of decline with flavours, mostly egg for me. Um, as, as, as the paddock closes there, but both very, very good parents, both not conflicting, not ugly, or anything you wouldn't want to taste again. Um, I think if I was having breakfast, I'd probably go for the for the, for the rosé then, because it's a nice burst, it's a nice joyous, as you say, very joyous, it's a very awakening flavour, maybe for an afternoon, I'd probably go with the pub, I'd say. Yeah, I'd agree with you, the same. The the rosé, to me, rem reminded me of we're just like sitting in the garden and sort of seeing that sun rise. That sort you of have to get up early. You would have to get up early. Yeah. But sort of that sun rise, a refreshing, light red berryness mm. with, a, with a nice breakfast. And what a lovely picture that Oliver's painted there for us. Well, we'll leave that fresh in your memory. And thanks for watching. Until next time. Enjoy the fizz.